Greetings to all of you. I hope everybody is safe, comfortable, and more importantly, healthy and happy. I was thinking yesterday about the cultural summit and what I was going to be speaking to everybody about today. And the first question that came to mind was why? Why do we do cultural summits? Why for the fourth straight year, we've had a cultural summit here in Abu Dhabi? And it was more important to answer why this year than ever before. When the concept of the cultural summit came to mind, it was with the understanding of connectiveness, cultural connectiveness with the rest of the world, and making sure that every voice is heard, not just the large institutions or the bodies that are making policies, but every voice is being heard, from the artist to the actor, to the musician, to the educator, and the list goes on, large institutions, small institutions. And once we hear all these voices and connect these voices, we can start formulating solutions to our problems. Problems that are either going to make our ecosystem stronger or are going to break it apart. And we are all here today and we've been here together, not just for the past year, but for years in the past, and I'm 100% sure for years in the future, on finding solutions to really prosper our ecosystem. Make sure our ecosystem is not just a part of our daily lives, but a part of every society that we are a part of. And that is critical for us. So time flies very quickly, and I hope I answered the why. Um, in the last four years, we have brought together individuals from all over the world, from different races, different genders, different institutions that have come here to Abu Dhabi and discussed problems. And we have come together to find solutions. And the summit itself does not end over three, a three day period. It really continues for the, for the years to come because a solution is not found in a minute. It takes time, it needs commitment by each and every one of us. Last year was the first year we had a virtual summit. This year, hopefully the last of its kind, we had another virtual summit. In the world of culture, we all know that human interaction is critical for us. And having these one-to-one -one discussions is an imperative part of what culture is all about. In Abu Dhabi, and during this specific iteration, it's imperative for us to come together and, and think about ideas on how we can help each other advance our cultural and our creative industries and the benefits they bring to our economy and our to society. You know, we look at the world we are living today, and this year, it's like every other year when we talk about addressing critical issues that are facing our world. The critical issue this year are quite immense. I don't think any of us thought in the beginning of the pandemic, and I think back to last year's uh, virtual summit, that we would be in, in these situations today. It has heavily affected people. Not only that many of us have lost loved ones, uh, this pandemic has, has shown us that we have a greater role to play. But this role doesn't come easy. And this pathway that we're gonna take and this voyage that we're all gonna take together, it has to be done together. It has to be hand in hand. Uh, it reminds me that during the, the first days of the pandemic, it was amazing having discussions with you know, my counterparts in other museums to discuss how are we gonna find solutions to make sure people are back in our museums, uh, enjoying these beautiful pieces of art, uh, feeling one with, 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 with sculptures, with paintings. It was critical for us and we worked hand in hand together. And that was more importantly, so beautiful to see because we were all doing it for the same cause. The, the cause of strengthening culture and making sure culture is a part of our DNA, regardless what comes our way. Pandemic, any other thing that comes our way, we're gonna be doing it together. And I think it's an opportunity that this pandemic has come at this time to show us that these solutions will only happen if we work together, if we engage each other all the time, not just in summits like this, but it really becomes a part of our daily lives. Um, this specific year, we have really focused our efforts uh, specifically on the, the economy of culture and the culture of economy. We understand that it's imperative for any society to blossom with culture being front and center in the thought of the minds of any decision maker or policy maker, whether at the highest place of government all the way to the civil servants. It's critical that this is a part of the entire ecosystem, whether from younger age education all the way to secondary education and to the, the livelihoods of our daily lives. 
in doing so, we have more than ever, our cultural ecosystem is under threat. It's under threat from many factors. And I think we are all a part of seeing what these factors are, whether it is funding requirements, whether it is stimulus packages for our cultural programs, whether enhancing philanthropy within our cultural programs, and the list goes on. We understand more than ever, we understand collectively more than ever that we are a solution for humanity. During this pandemic, we saw firsthand the, you know, what this pandemic has brought to mental health. It's been quite devastating. I think the, long, the, the lasting impression of this uh, mental health issues will last quite some time. The solution, the medicine of this is culture. And literally we have seen it firsthand here in Abu Dhabi. I mean, I can specifically talk about myself. I mean, if it wasn't for listening to Fairuz every morning and then listening to Sam Cooke every night, I'm sure it would have been a lot more difficult. This is the power of culture, music, uh, going to museums, uh, seeing performing arts, engaging with that sector is not just good for the mind. More importantly, it's good for the heart, it's good for the soul. This is why we should definitely dedicate more time, more effort in finding solutions uh, to, our, to our situation. Um, it is a healing power. And it is a power, culture is a power that not only, like I said, it's an imperative to any, any society. It is really the building blocks of a society that is tolerant, a society that is accepting, a society, a society that's full of love. And I think in points like this pandemic, this is really all what we need. This is really the best solution. So within our problems, how do we make sure that the policymakers, the decision makers, the governments, the institutions truly understand what it takes to make culture front and center? What is it gonna take for it to become an imperative part of school curricula? What is it gonna take that it's a part, it is really treated as a, you know, from my perspective, it's, it's, it's treated as a social service not just as a cultural service. It has to be in the same breath as a social service. It has, to be, it has to create viable and new revenue streams for cultural institutions and professionals. We need to make sure that this entire cultural stream is basically strong because we're only as strong as, as who's right next to us, from the smallest to the biggest. This is truly what's going to make our cultural agenda, our collective global cultural agenda, and when I talk about cultural strategies and cultural agendas, it's not really focused on a specific ge a geography. If we really want it to be a part of life, then it has to be collective global agenda. And I am extremely grateful for all the partners that are with us during this cultural summit and beyond, whether it's UNESCO, whether it's the Guggenheim, The Economist, Google, the United Nations Conference of Trade and Development, the Design Museum, and the other partners. All of you are our partners. Every single thought, every single idea that's going to be put in play is going to be thought of collectively, and it's truly going to be respected and listened to. And I think this was one of the, also an, an imperative role of the cultural summit. We decided early on, and it was imperative for us and very important for us that every voice has to be heard, every voice. And you know, when we had the cultural summit in Abu Dhabi, it was beautiful to see you know, having large museums and institutions interacting with, with artists, interacting with educators, really bringing the entire ecosystem right smack together into each other. And it was, it was the outcomes were, were fantastic. And every single year where we discuss a specific point, we then make it very clear to everybody that our job does not end in the end of these three days. We need to continuously put effort to continuously not just find solutions for ourselves, but to find solutions for everybody else. One of the, one of the major points I really wanted to leave with everybody also is with, 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 our, with the pandemic, it has also opened many opportunities for us. A big opportunity that, that I see that we can all come together and work on it is can we now truly, after we've seen the importance of culture, understanding the importance of culture in any society, under, understanding how culture is, is critical to the growth of any society, can we really now come together and can we build a new case for culture? Can we truly create a new value propositions for culture? A proposition that communicates how central culture is responding to our new realities. 
Because if we do this correctly, then it becomes, like I said, first and, and center in any thought of any budgeting cycle, of any policy cycle. And that in itself it becomes a, a, a growth spurt for culture to the entire world. Um, you know, when it's all said and done, when it's all said and done, we are all here for one reason. We all truly love and cherish culture. We all believe of, of its power. It really has a superpower. And we all believe that eventually we're, this pandemic is gonna be over. And we all believe when it's over that this human interaction with culture is really important. We just need to right now make sure that the building blocks that maybe in the past weren't set as strong as they should, now is our opportunity to set them in stone. Now is our opportunity not just to think about ourselves, but to think about our future. Think about the future generations. Think about how they're going to be taking our strategies and our thoughts and enhancing them and making sure that the problems that we have faced, they never face. Uh, this is really our job, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I believe in everybody's capabilities. We all believe in each other. I think it's just important for us to just put hand in hand together, find the necessary time and effort to put everything on the table, make sure that we all work diligently together in finding solutions. We are all here for each other. If there's anything this pandemic has taught us is that when things go bad, we are here for each other. Whether we are in North America, we are in Southeast Asia, we are in, in Africa, regardless where we are, this connectiveness is what's gonna make our cultural strategies and our cultural visions, our collective cultural visions come to huge fruition for all of us. So thank you all. Uh, I hope the next three days are gonna be exceptional for everybody. Um, I have, there's fantastic panelists, there's fantastic talks. I think we're all gonna learn so much from this. We have to engage. We have to put our thoughts on the table. And then in the end of the day, we all have to look ourselves in the mirror and, and ask ourselves, what have we done to make a difference? Again, thank you from Abu Dhabi and I hope to see you soon uh, in the very near future. Thank you.